Welcome to this InfoSecurity Europe podcast. My name is Nitin Natarajan. I'm the Deputy Director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency here at the Department of Homeland Security in the United States. Really excited to be at InfoSecurity Europe this year to talk about protecting data and how do we do that in times of constant connection. And really, what are the steps that both businesses and individuals and governments can take to protect and secure their data? How can we work together collaboratively across the public and the private sectors to strengthen our cybersecurity efforts, to increase our resilience against cyber threat actors, and, and to really move the ball forward in increasing that global resilience effort that we all have an individual role to play? Really excited to be at the show in person this year to, to have the dialogue, to uh, engage with partners from around the globe, to really talk through active steps that individuals can take to protect their networks, to learn about challenges that our partners are facing, to solve together how we can work together to solve a lot of these challenges um, in, in partnership. And really also to help address concerns and fears. I think as we go down these paths, a lot of people get concerned about what happens with things like increased information sharing, what happens when we collaborate with people we've never worked with before, and how do we start to build that trust and build that foundation that we're going to need to work together to tackle these challenging issues. So as, I think as we look at, co at collaboration, there, there's a lot of challenges that we face. And I think often people like to look at collaboration as being a technological challenge. And, I'd offer, we have plenty of technology, right? We have plenty of great solutions to tackle collaboration. We have plenty of platforms in which to collaborate. I think often collaboration becomes an issue of the willingness of the parties to collaborate and that building of trust amongst partners and in, in the information that they're sharing in the protection of that information and the proper usage of that information. And, and I think, you know, as we look at really going into a lot of this with the understanding that we are all looking at a common goal. We're looking at a common goal of tackling an adversary, uh, a very robust, dynamic, a well-resourced adversary in a collective way that we want to we want to go in with noble intent. We want to go in with the understanding that we are supporting one another and working together to, to tackle these challenges. Uh, and I think that getting through those initial hurdles are really what's going to help strengthen our ability to collaborate more effectively, both in within our organizations and also globally. I think when it comes to collaboration, there is a lot of concern and fear that individuals have. There's a lot of concern about what happens with the privacy of my information, what happens if this gets out in, into uh, the open open source. And I think a lot of what we've done within CISA, and we definitely encourage others to do, and many other organizations have done as well, is investing the time up front to not just build that trust, but also to demonstrate and be transparent in how data and information are going to be utilized to be able to speak to what's gonna happen and what is gonna be that outcome. I think all too often we've been in situations where we've all given lots of information and not received anything back. So you immediately wonder what is happening there. But having that ability to ensure and to follow through on that commitment to return back information, product, guidance, uh, some type of return on that investment that that individual has provided and in sharing that information can help foster that trust, can help show the benefits of information sharing more effectively, and can show where that collaboration really is a force multiplier in that individual's participation in that collective. So those steps like that that we can take, that we can all continue to take, and it, we're never done, right? These are not steps that, that are, you know, once we get to number 10, we're done. It's a continual action we need to do um, week after month, month after month, year after year, uh, to continue those efforts as we move forward. And so I think as we look at information sharing, as we look at the collaboration and who's benefiting from this, I, I really think, it, and, and I, I don't say this to take the easy way out, but I say everyone. I think that the more that, because we all have a different vantage point, we all have a different role to play, we all have different tools in our toolbox uh, to tackle uh, this threat. So I think as each of us contribute in our own unique way, right, an internet service provider or a large corporate multinational corporation or an individual, we all have different roles that we can play. But I think as we each play our individual role, we make it that much harder for the adversary to attack us. As we as individuals use things like multi-factor authentication and strong passwords, it helps change that attack paradigm for our threat actors. As companies invest in more robust cybersecurity, as internet service providers look at their security uh, capabilities and, and strengthen there, as we all do that, our individual roles, we create that fabric of security across the ecosystem 
that makes it harder for the adversary to attack. So I, I'd like to think if we all do our part, we all benefit from that, uh, as opposed to any one individual group. There is a collective benefit to the collective defense. So I think when it comes to collaboration, I mean, CISA, I'd like to think that we, we practice what we preach and we invest very, very heavily in our partnerships and our collaboration. And we actually think that's the foundation of our ability to be successful. And whether that's through efforts that we recently stood up on our joint cyber defense collaborative, where we've brought together industry as well as other parts of the federal government and partners together to really look behind the curtain and have those discussions on how we can plan together for future cyber attacks. We do extensive information sharing with state, local, tribal, territorial governments within the United States. We work extensively with international partners as well. We have partners all over the globe that we work with every single day uh, to share information, to understand tactics, techniques, procedures that folks are seeing from adversaries, to share best practices in what's working and what's not. And how do we work together, not just with governments, but also with academic partners, with industry, with the private sector around the globe, to really help us build our defensive posture, but in hopes in doing so, we are helping others as well uh, increase theirs. So it really becomes the core element of everything that we do is building those partnerships, having strong collaboration, and building that trust amongst our partners. Thank you for listening to this InfoSecurity Europe podcast.